Hi, today's video is going to be on IT specialists and why I hate them. So one of the things that I've noticed over the course of my tech career is that there are a lot of people that believe that they need to do this one little thing well, and that if they do that one thing well, that that's all they'll need to do throughout their entire life in order to succeed. And what adds insult to injury is not when somebody has that mentality, but when they believe that having that mentality and that the fact that they're so good at this one specific thing is actually uh, a way to get out of having to learn about anything else. So what people will do is they'll actually take pride in being totally clueless about one section of tech as a way to reinforce that I'm so good at the one thing I do for a living that I can suck at everything else and get away with it because I'm just that good. And it's, some, it's an attitude that I, I really am not fond of and I want to explain it through a story here. So we set up this network for this one office. We did everything from soup to nuts besides the cameras. There was somebody else who did the cameras who was doing the construction. We did the o wireless mesh network. We did the phone system. We did the actual network, the server, the file server, the backups, Active Directory, domain, installing the software they were using for their office, installing inspection equipment and wireless video stuff that they were using for inspection, all sorts of cool shit. And we get done with it, and they needed to install an application on one of the servers that we set up. And we go, oh dear, that server is not meant for your applications. That server is meant for other things. But again, things don't always work out the way you want. Good luck explaining to small business owners why they shouldn't do things that are bad ideas. So the person shows up to install the stuff. And here's one of the things to understand about when you're at oh, any type of work site, construction work site, infrastructure build out work site, is that you need to be nice to the people who you are working with or the, per or the co other companies that are next to you. Everybody likes to hate the other company. I often like to hate the other company. I'm sure the other company sometimes hates me, but here's what's going to happen. Someday you're going to do something stupid, or you're not going to have a tool that you need, or somebody is going to mishear what you said you were going to do and expect you to do shit that you can't do. And whether the person next to you helps you and gets you out of that situation, or treats you like a piece of trash, laughs at you and badmouths you to the boss, it's all going to depend on how you treat them. So even when I'm dealing with a complete idiot, I will be as nice as I can and we will do everything we can to go out of our way to just have some basic common fucking courtesy. So when the person doing the construction says, I, don't, I can't set up the camera system, and I go, well, why not? And he goes, because I don't have a monitor for my DVR box. And I go, oh, why don't you find a monitor? He goes, I don't own a spec and monitor. Instead of going, you stupid prick, I say, Fine, sure, you can borrow the monitor that's going attaching to our servers, but, but, you must bring the monitor back. That's all we ask. This is the box, this is the cable, this is everything. I'm going to plug it into your camera system. You set it up. I'm not going to be here for the next five hours. I want to go home. But what I want you to do, and just do me this one favor, is plug that monitor back into my server setup so I don't have to come back here. And what do you think the guy does? He sits there, he sets up his cameras, he finishes doing everything, and he walks the fuck home. And it not, doesn't, doesn't give two shits of a fuck. Doesn't give two shits of a fuck. So the person comes to set up the software, they go to the server room, and we, we actually had a bet here going on this. Like, are we going to get a call at 9 o'clock at night saying that they can't set stuff up because there's no monitor there? And we were like, no, the guy can't possibly be that stupid. And... Needless to say, right around closing time, we get a call from somebody going, um, uh, I, 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 I don't know how to set this up on the server. Um, there's, there's no monitor. And I go, well, we, how about team viewer? Um, I left my personal laptop at the hotel. How about you get your personal laptop from the hotel since you're charging my client between ten dollars and $20,000 for two days of your fucking time? Oh, um, I can't do that. Okay, how about this? Here, I explained everything as clear as day. This is new construction. So you see how there's three servers over here? Yes. So in the next room, see, see there's a room right next door? And he goes, yes. Okay, there's a, there's a monitor in that room. Now what I need you to do is I need you to take that monitor. And you see where there's a power plug and a VGA plug in the first room? Yes. What I need you to do is I need you to take that monitor. And I need you to bring it to my server and plug it in. And then you'll be set. You know what they say over the phone? I don't know if I'll, I, I, don't, I don't think I should be doing that. Well, why not? Because I'm not sure how it's hooked up. Not, 
I don't want to do that because that's not mine. Not, I don't want to do that because this is a bunch of proprietary connectors that I'm not familiar with. It's a $100 fucking monitor that hooks up to, via VGA. But because I don't think I'm going to be able to, I don't think I know how to do this. What is wrong with you? What, in what world can you be a specialist in anything related to IT and tell me that you don't know how to hook up a fucking monitor to a server with VGA, um, with 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 a VGA port, what? Why are you serious? Are you and and this this is a, it's a, it's a KVM switch that we had. So there was um there were two or three servers there for d totally different purposes. I think like one was a phone system, one was Active Directory. I I don't remember what the third one was for anymore. I'm just so irritated now. I have to get in the fucking phone call that I forget how everything was set up. But um, we uh, it, there was a KVM switch. So for those of you who don't know what this is, you're probably not IT professionals, and that's cool. Because you're not somebody who's charging ten to twenty thousand fucking dollars to install a program who doesn't know what it is. That's cool. If you're not an IT professional, what a KVM switch is, it's a device. So let's say I have five computers in front of me. Let's say I have different things for different purposes. I don't want to have five monitors and five keyboards. I may only need to access one at once. So what the KVM switch does, it is allows me to plug in one keyboard, one mouse, and one monitor into the switch. I plug every one of the computers into the switch. And then I have a little button or a remote or something, a knob on the switch that allows me to switch the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor between all the different computers. So this way I can choose which computer I'm administering without having to unplug shit and without having to uh, you know, un unplug it or plug the monitor in a different ones or even worse, have a separate monitor, keyboard, and mouse for every computer. That makes no sense. It's not efficient. So we have a KVM switch. And it's a very simple KVM switch. It's labeled as a KVM switch. And the remote button f is coming out from the label KVM switch and it's sitting right next next to the keyboard. So whatever. I go over there and I run over there right before closing at the end of my fucking day to take the monitor from this room, to plug the VGA cord in, to plug the IC power cable in, and turn it on. And she looks at me and she goes, but look, see, this is why I didn't want to do it. There's no video. And I go, watch this. And I hit the little remote and I go, doop, doop, doop. And it goes over to the server. And she goes, well, what do you, oh, look, see, there's still no video. And I go, wait a second, watch this. And I take my index finger and I hit space bar on the keyboard and the screen decides to actually show the picture because it was in the power saving mode. It's not going to keep the monitor on all the time. And you see the login screen for the server. And I think that I'm done. I thought at this point that my job was done, that I had plugged in the monitor that they were not qualified to, that I used the KVM switch that apparently in, in 2016 you need a fucking certification on before you feel comfortable using. I thought I was done, and I looked, and I thought to my, and they, they, they just stared at it like, uh, like, like, like a dragon. And I, I would understand this was a Linux server. Maybe you're a little confused or something running, you know, Citrix or FreeBSD. I'd get it. You're looking at Windows Server 2012. What the fuck is so confusing? It was at this point that I thought it couldn't get any worse, but it actually can. So I, 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 I was thinking to myself, it can't be possible. It can't be possible that this organization did not prepare for this ahead of time. Please tell me they did not. Please tell me they prepared for this ahead of time. And I look and I go... You don't have the login information to any of these accounts, do you? And they go, no, I don't actually. And I go, okay, how about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to email you this information so that you have it and that you're all set and ready to go. And they go, okay, but I actually can't get the email here. And I go, well, why not? And they go, well, well I don't get that either by the business email on my phone. And I go, okay, check it on your laptop. I left my laptop at the hotel. Okay. How about you check your email in one of the computers upstairs? Oh, I can't log into it. I have to log into it on the program on my laptop. Okay, how about this guy hires somebody that's halfway fucking competent to install this damn software? <laughs> and, oh man, we wound, I, I wound up just taking an email off of my phone and just writing this shit down on a piece of paper and saying, here you go. Here are your passwords. Here is your username. And I went back the next day to ensure that for the love of God, this information was not post-it noted or duct taped onto the monitor for the fucking server like it is at every other damn small business in New York City.
because that's the way it is. I, I stopped by because I knew if I didn't stop by, there was probably going to be a post-it. And thank God I'm an agnostic, but still sometimes it's just the, it's a, just the saying. Thank God that, 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 that there was no post-it on there with the, uh, with, with the fucking passwords when I got there. At least one thing was done right. This is the problem with, techno- with, with technology people who specialize in certain things. Uh, you know, again, I am a college dropout and college failure a total of three times. I have lost count of which ones are dropouts and which ones are failures. I don't have certifications in anything specific. If I, can modif- I could modify a game console to play copied games. I can fix studio gear from 1951 through 1992 with a very startling degree of proficiency and quickly. I can set up an FTP server. I can uh, recover an MDADM RAID array. I can set up Active Directory. I can set up a PBX box for three uh, people in an office or a 10,000 user organization with a lot of features. I can repair a laptop motherboard at component level. I can you know, put together my own Linux distribution without reading the Gentoo manual. Uh, I am not that intelligent. I'm not that smart. I don't have any uh, real education. And the, w- this does not come from the fact that I was just born a fucking genius. It has to do with the fact that when I see a problem, I look at the problem and I don't think to myself, well, oh, gee, I'm not certified in how to solve that problem. Problem, but rather I say, hmm, if somebody came up with this shit who is a human, then I as a human can also figure it out. And I feel like more people in this country should think that way. And I, I know I've been on a kick lately with the Donald Trump video and the immigration video on this the whole thing and things that are wrong with, 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 with people in America, which is kind of kind of odd considering I was born in Brooklyn. But I really do notice this as a trend from people who are born here. Again, a lot of the people that I meet who were not born here, who immigrated here, they don't have this idea that, um, you know, again, as one of the people I, I used to work with put it, you know, in America, people think that if you, if you need to screw in a light bulb, that you need to have a special certification to screw in that light bulb. And that if you have a light bulb that requires being snapped in, that you're not able to do that because you only have the certification for the light bulb that you screw in. And that the reason all these immigrants are coming in, quote unquote, taking our jobs is not because they're willing to do the work for half the price, but rather they're willing to say, uh, fuck it, you know what? I don't have a certification to do this, but I have a brain in my head, so I'll screw in the damn light bulb without saying, I don't know how to do it. Uh, and and it's, it's a real issue among tech professionals in general. I see it so often where people go, well, I know how to do this, but I don't want to do that. And I totally, I totally get it if you don't want to do something that you're not qualified for. Somebody came in here the other day and asked if I would fix high-grade medical equipment, and I said, fuck no, because if I'm going to tinker around with something and I don't really know exactly how that system works, it had better not be a system that's, that, that's being used for life support. It better not be a system that's used in surgery. I don't want people to die off, some, off of me running the wire from here instead of from here. But at the same time, there is some level of common sense that goes into a lot of what we do, and there is a level of common sense that I would expect from an IT professional if I ask you to plug in a fucking monitor. I expect that in 2016, in a world where you can literally, if you don't know what that box is, you can take the barcode, you can Google the fucking barcode picture from your cell phone, and your cell phone will tell you how the product works and link you to a manual. I expect you to figure out how that shit works. In 1995, maybe not. In 2016, absolutely hell yes do I expect you to be able to figure out some of this shit on your own. And it kills me when people say, oh, I know how to do this, but I can't do this. I know how to do this, but I can't do this. I know how to do this, but I can't do this. How about you fucking learn? Because the people who are successful in tech long term, not the people who just get on these waves and they ride the wave until it goes down and whatever they do is not popular anymore, but the people who actually make a living for themselves for long periods of time, not the people who get lucky and become billionaires off of their one little niche, but the people who just continue to um, continue to go from one thing to the next seamlessly and seem to just be experts in their field and to continue to be experts in their field without just getting lucky once or twice. Those are the people who are not afraid to try something new. They're the, they're the people who are not afraid to learn something that they don't know. They're people who are not afraid to try something that they're not familiar with. Again, like I wasn't familiar with Linux the first time I used it. I didn't know how MDADM worked the first time I set it up. I wasn't aware of how overclocking works the first time I overclocked a computer. I assure you, the first 
first time that I stepped foot in Avatar Studios, I had no fucking clue how his Studer A800 was put together. I had no idea how Poltec EQP1 worked. I had no idea how a Neve 31102 or a Neve 2254 worked. But within three months of working there, you bet your ass I was good at it. Um... You'll see, the first time that I opened up a MacBook logic board, I was not able to do some shit like this to it and get it to work. Yes, I know it's hard to believe from here, but believe it or not, this shit actually works. Uh, again, this, I wasn't born with this. There was no certification class I took in how to do this. What I did is I just took one bit of knowledge and I went to the next piece and the next piece and the next piece. I just kept trying to grab more and more knowledge as I went. And, and, and you know, it, it, this stuff is not impossible. Again, one of my best friends will say this. He'll say, you know, if people put this shit together, then people can figure this shit out. If somebody broke that, then we should know how to fix it. If a person broke it, a person can fix it. If a person built it, then another person can tell you how it works. It's just, it's that simple. None of this shit is alien. When I go over, well, you know, the difference between uh, VCCIO and VCore, a person came up with that. Maybe a person with a more advanced engineering degree than you, maybe somebody who knows the power sequence of how that machine works, and he came up with it in a specific reasoning, but a person came up with that. Even if there's somebody who's more qualified than me, more qualified than you, a person came up with it, meaning that a person like us can solve it. And a person... Specifically, a person who's getting paid ten or twenty thousand fucking dollars to install one bullshit ass piece of software should know how to plug in a monitor. Should know that their business email should go to their phone. Should know that if their business email does not go to their phone, that it should go to a laptop that they keep on them at all times in case they miss something like getting the fucking password from the business owner before showing up at the business. Because this may surprise you again, real world thing here. Because a lot of people will say, you don't have any real certifications. You're a hack. You're, you don't know what you're doing. But I actually kind of have some half a fucking clue about how the real world works. The, some of the people don't get is that when you go to a small business, surprise, surprise, the owner is not always around. Very often, the owner is out at meetings. The owner may be out to lunch. The owner may be on an out call. The owner may be on his yacht 50 miles away because that's just what business owners do. And again, big surprise. The receptionist at the organization might not have the administrative details to the primary office server. How about you get that shit ahead of time so that when you show up asking for ten dollars or $20,000 for whatever it is you did, that you don't look like a complete fucking idiot. But I don't have to do that because I'm a specialist and that's not my job. Fucking stupid people.